Hello, thanks for listening to my presentation. My name is Gustavo Sanchez, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. And today I'm going to talk about how information from the Bobtail squid genomes and transcriptome help me to characterize the diversity of these animals and also to understand the evolution of the multiple symbiotic organs in cephalopods. Bobtail squid are small uh, cephalopods with around one to five centimeters of dorsal mantle length with different lifestyle across their life cycle. They particularly have evolved this uh, camouflage where they use counter illumination to avoid predators during, during night. They are usually nocturnal predators. And recently they are becoming a promising model species. Uh, however, very few is known about the evolution and the diversity of these animals around the world. Here I show the phylogenetic relationship of different cephalopods, where cattlefish are basal to the decapodiforms, and idiosepius, the pygmy squid idiosepius, are sister to both the squid here represented by uh, Euprimus calopes, and they, pygmy squid and both the squid, are sister to the rest of the decapodiforms. When we talk about both the squid, we usually refer to members of the family Sepulidae. This family uh, have around 68 species and contain three different subfamilies. All of them are, can be found in different parts of the ocean's world. Perhaps the most famous bobtail squid is the Hawaiian bobtail squid, Euphrimus calopes, which has been largely used as a model to study the metazoan and bacteria symbiosis. Bobtail squids accumulate this alibiro fisheri during daytime, and then it uses it at nighttime when the squid goes to swim in the water column for hunting, to create what is called a counter illumination, which is a way for the animal to camouflage. However, other bobtail squid, like for example, on the on the right bar, I showed uh, another bobtail squid that are from a different uh, uh, subfamily, uh, also have this light organ, but instead of having a, a, an organ with symbiosis, it has an organ that only secretes uh, luminescence that are produced by their own animals. Using the transcriptome of uh, different species from the Ryukyu archipelago and also other bobtail squid from uh, mainland Japan, we identify one species that was never reported before that we call Euprima brenneri. One of our collection called Sepiola parva renders the clade of Euprimna paraphyletic, and therefore we reassign this Sepiola parva as part of the genus Euprimna. And now this species is called Euprimna parva. In order to further understand the evolution of these animals, uh, we collect specimens from different parts of the ocean worlds. We collect 32 specimens and uh, include five more specimens from the database. And all of these specimens correspond to the valid two families reported to date. We sequence their genome and low coverage to include between 1.6 to 3.6x of genomic reads. Using our low coverage genome sequencing, we extract entire mitochondrial genome of all of our collections. And also we map these genomic reads to the reference genome of Euprimus calopes that allow us to extract also other nuclear loci that are conserved across different species. Our phylogenetic tree identified two different lineage within the subfamily Sepiolinae. One that includes individuals only distributed in the Indo-Pacific Ocean, and the other that includes the species only distributed in the Mediterranean and Atlantic Ocean. We characterized these two lineage by morphology and found that females of the Indo-Pacific Ocean has what we call a closed bursa cupulatrix, which is an organ that females use to store sperm, and uh, females from the lineage of the Mediterranean and Atlantic Ocean has what we call a closed bursa cupulatrix. And uh, then we, uh, based on this molecular and morphological characterization, we uh, have classified this lineage in two new tribes, one that is called Euprimini, that includes individuals from the Indo-Pacific Ocean, and the other that is called Sepiolini, to include the species from the Mediterranean and Atlantic Ocean. Bobtail squid has evolved this uh, so-called light organ, where the shape can be found as a billow shape or also as a single lobe shape. Usually the light organ that has this billow shape is associated with symbiotic bacteria, whereas animals with a single lobe uh, light organ usually doesn't need uh, symbiotic bacteria to produce light, but rather produce luminescence by the animal itself. 
So in order to understand how this light organ has evolved in the, in the bobtail squid lineage, we perform an ancestral reconstruction analysis. For the subfamily Sepiolinae, we identified several species that uh, have lost independently the light, uh, the beloved light organ. We found here, for example, in Euteptis japonica in the Indo-Pacific lineage, and all the Sepieta uh, genera in the, in, in the Mediterranean and Atlantic Ocean lineage. We also found that the ancestors of the Sepiolinae are very likely to have possessed light organ, uh, beloved light organ. Other subfamily, in this case, the family, the subfamily Rosinae, with a single species that apparently have a beloved light organ. The whole uh, subfamily has apparently an ancestor that are very likely to not have possessed a beloved light organ. For the type of luminescence, we were able to identify that the beloved light organ that is associated with, uh, with the ancestor of the subfamily Sepiolinae are also likely to have possessed bacteriogenic uh, luminescence. Whereas uh, another subfamily here from the subfamily Heteroteotinae are uh, all of them possess a single love light organ and therefore the ancestor have possessed likely a, a single light organ with what we call autogenic luminescence because it's the animal itself that produces light. Both the characterization of the diversity of bobtail squid in the Ryukyu archipelago and the evolution of the bobtail squid light organ can be found in two of our publications from 2019 and 2021 in communications biology. Here I want to show you that the uh, symbiotic uh, organs in cephalopods are not limited to the light organ in bobtail squid. Here I put a, a photo of female bobtail squid and a female cuttlefish, where you can observe also the other symbiotic organ in cephalopods that is called the accessory in the mental gland, that is usually uh, used by females to uh, protect uh, their eggs with bacteria that uh, will end up being laid in the in rocks and it, pro it will protect the eggs from predators. You can observe that these accessory in the mental gland are characterized by this uh, colorful uh, orange, colorful uh, organ, because uh, this contains a bacteria consortium that are mainly uh, flavobacteria that produce carotenoids and therefore uh, the color orange of this organ here. This is the uh, accessory in the mental gland and you can observe here also sometimes for some species like bob squid, they have both the accessory in the mental gland and the light organ in, this, in their ventral position. So currently I'm part of uh, this uh, Cephalopod Research Hub where uh, we are uh, funded by the Aquatic Symbiosis Genomic Project and we are sequencing uh, the genome of different cephalopods that contains uh, symbiotic organs, both the light organ and the accessory to the mental gland. Our research hub is led by Professor Oleg Simakov from the University of Vienna, but we have also other collaborators uh, with different expertise that uh, will help us to finally un understand uh, the genomic signatures be behind the, the origin of these uh, symbiotic organs. Finally, I want to uh, thanks to Professor Daniel Roxer, who is currently the PI of the unit I belong. Also, other I want to thank to other collaborators, including Professor Luis Alcock and Mora Taite, who are based currently in the University of Ireland, Galway. Also to Fernando Fernandez Alvarez, who is currently in the Institute of Marine Science in Barcelona, and also to the Aquatic Symbiosis Genomic Project, who is helping us to sequence the genome of different cephalopods to characterize the, uh, the symbiotic organs that I mentioned today. Thank you very much.